In this video, we'll go back in time to take a close look at 10 of the greatest concepts that have influenced the evolution of the Corvette to what it is today. I'll start my list of the top 10 Corvette concepts with the prototype that started it all. At number 10, the 1953 EX122. On January 17, 1953, General Motors revealed the first prototype of a new two-seater sports car which was referred to as the EX122. This car was featured at the General Motors Motorama Auto Show at the Waldorf Australia Hotel in New York City. The car generated sufficient interest for mass production to begin only six months later on June 30, 1953. GM used the EX code to name its experimental cars before they were given an official model name. This model became known as the Corvette, named after a fast type of naval warship. The original concept had a 3.8 liter inline 6, rated at 150 horsepower, made it to a two-speed automatic gearbox. The six-cylinder engine was eventually removed and an eight-cylinder V8 was used for production models. The original Corvette is on display at Kerbeck Chevrolet, the largest Corvette dealer in the United States located in Atlantic City, New Jersey. In 1957, GM revealed the XP64 Corvette SS which was developed in secret for the 1957 Sebring 12 hours in March. The XP64 was built by a select group of Corvette engineers including Zora Duntoff. The SS is an ultra-lightweight race car made of a magnesium body that weighed only 1,850 pounds. It featured a 4.6 liter V8 with power increased to 307 horsepower. When the XP64 raced for the first time after 12 hours of Sebring, it retired after 23 laps due to mechanical failure. It was at this time that Zora Duntaw began pushing for the Corvette to shift to a mid-engine layup. Moving on to number 8, the 1958 Corvette XP700. This concept redesigned the existing model to have longer lines, big air scoops, quad headlights, a protruding grille snout and wire wheels. The most interesting feature on this concept was the, was the futuristic cockpit enclosure which was a one-piece plastic canopy. The engine was the same as the previous concept, a small block 4.6 liter V8 that put out 307 horsepower. This concept was built under the personal supervision of GM chief designer William Bill Mitchell. Interesting fact about the XP700, the vehicle suddenly vanished. Some suspect it was secretly destroyed by GM. Some claim that its chassis was used to build the XP755, the Mako Shark Corvette concept. That leads us to the next concept, the 1961 XP755, also known as the Mako Shark. It's believed the inspiration for the design came from Mako Shark that GM designer Bill Mitchell caught off the coast of Florida, hence its blue and white paintwork. The distinct styling includes a double bubble roof, side pipe exhaust, and a periscope rear view mirror. Its back end featured a short upturned ducktail that would be formally introduced on the Chevy Corvette on the 1961 model. The car featured concealed headlights out front and two pairs of three round taillights in the rear. Initially, the car was displayed without an engine and in 1965, the Mako Shark debuted with a new 7 liter V8 that put out 425 horsepower and 489 pound feet of torque. Curve stands for Chevrolet Engineering Research Vehicle. The 1967 Serve 2 was designed by Zora and was conceived early in 1962 under Zora's direction between 1963 to 1964. The design is similar to the Ford GT40 and featured a monocoque steel subframe. This was the first mid-engine designed Corvette designed to compete with the Ford GT40. The engine was a 7 liter V8 putting out 500 horsepower. It was reported that the car could go 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds and over 180 miles per hour. The Serv 2 also incorporated a high-tech feature in the form of an all-wheel drive system based on a turret converter and two-speed transmission that drove the rear wheels and another smaller unit that powered the front wheels. Next on our list is the Corvette XP880 known as the Astro 2. GM revealed this exotic looking mid-engine concept at the New York Auto Show in 1968. The rear section of Astro 2 hinged at the back to allow access to the engine and drivetrain. The front storage area lifted like a regular hood. The Astro 2 has a wheelbase of 100 inches, overall length of 181 inches and a height of, of a mere 43.7 inches and an overall width of 74 inches. By using off-the-shelf parts, GM was able to build the Astro 2 at that relatively low cost. The rear suspension was very Corvette-like with upper control arms, lower lateral links, and a traverse leaf spring. 
Powering the Astro 2 was a 7 liter V8 that put out 400 horsepower to the rear wheels through a 2 speed automatic using the transaxle of Pontiac Tempest which turned out to be too weak for the concept. Lead engineer Zora Arcus Dunta was hoping the Astro 2 would be the concept for next generation Corvette, but GM management thought the public was not ready for a mid-engine car. They reasoned since GM was having no trouble selling every Corvette right off the assembly line in the late 1960s, it made no sense to mess with success. The Astro 2 got very close to finding its way to the inside of a Chevrolet showroom. It has taken another 50 years for Zora's dream of a mid-engine Corvette to finally become reality. The Astro 2 currently resides in the GM Heritage Collection, often tucked away from the public eye. It rarely comes out for public viewing, which is unfortunate as I think this is one of the most beautifully designed cars ever. In 1973, GM revealed an all-new futuristic Corvette that featured a 6.4-liter, four-rotor Wankel engine that could produce 420 horsepower. The most interesting design feature of this concept are the gullwing doors. It had pop-up headlights from the 1969 Corvette. The concept had a sterling silver paint finish and a silver leather interior. The curvaceous design resulted in a drag coefficient of only 0.325. In 1976, a 6.6-liter V8 was selected to replace the rotary engine and the concept was planned to go into production as the Aerovet. However, as a result of production issues, this concept, like the one before, ended up as another mid-engine Corvette concept that did not make it to the assembly line. At number 3, we have the 1986 Corvette Indy concept. The Chevrolet Corvette Indy debuted at the 1986 Detroit Auto Show featuring an ultra-futuristic design, the most distinct feature being the scissor doors. This concept featured a mid-engine all-wheel drive layout and a new suspension system drive from Lotus. The long tail design necessitated by the Corvette's Indy's mid-engine layout wouldn't translate to production versions, but the rounded shape of the nose and pronounced swell of the front fenders would certainly influence the shape of the next Corvette model. The 2.65 liter twin turbo V8 produced around 600 horsepower. Top speed was estimated to be in excess of 180 miles per hour, while the run from 0 to 60 took less than 5 seconds, aided by both the car's four-wheel drive and its massive 315 rear tires. Amazingly, designer Jack Schwartz and his team designed and built this car in only six weeks. The 1990 Serve 3 is the fully realized Corvette Indy concept car. The body is a single piece composite made of carbon, fiber, and Kevlar. This concept featured technology that was ahead of its time such as all-wheel drive with four-wheel steering and a computer-controlled active suspension. The transmission was a six-speed automatic built from the existing hydromatic three-speed and the brakes used dual discs at each wheel. The power plant is a 5.7 liter twin turbo V8 that produced 650 horsepower. Top speed is believed to be 225 miles per hour and 0 to 60 time was 3.9 seconds. After its debut in 1990 at the Detroit International Auto Show, GM was close to putting this concept into production. However, it was determined that the asking price for the production version would need to be around $300,000. This at a time when the current base model Corvette was priced at $30,000. GM execs thought the sticker price would be too high for consumers and plans were abandoned to produce this concept. The 2009 Corvette Stingray concept debuted in February 2009 at the Chicago International Auto Show. Introduced four years before the C7, this Stingray concept would be the last front-engine designed Corvette prototype. It featured a distinctive split rear window from the 1963 Stingray and was so well received that it starred in the movie Transformers Revenge of the Fallen as the Autobot Sideswipe. The Stingray was designed with scissor doors and a reverse clamshell hood that were all opened with a simple touch of a button. It had extra wide rear quarter panels and prominent quad exhaust tips. In the inside, the designers responded to negative reviews about the C6 interior and designed an all new interior with lots of carbon fiber and an ultra comfortable body hugging seats, an advanced infotainment system and a customizable digital instrument cluster. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other Corvette related videos on my channel and I will see you on the next one.